Hey everyone, how's it going? Uh, we're back with another book review. This time we are reviewing Burn the Dark, a book number one in the Malice Domestica series by S.A. Hunt. Burn the Dark is an urban fantasy horror kind of mix that follows Robin Martine, a YouTube sensation that has millions of followers watching her go on witch hunts that, unbeknownst to them, are actually Robin going around killing witches. But during her witch hunting, she's continually plagued by nightmares of this big, bad monster called that she's dubbed the Red Lord. And as she's trying to figure her stuff out and escape the Red Lord, her journey inevitably brings her back to her hometown of Blackfield, which I believe is in Georgia. Burn the Dark, as I said, is the first in the Malice Domestica series, but there is another book that came out earlier this year. And actually, the third book in the series is coming out early next week, if you're watching this video the first day or first couple days it goes up. But let's jump right into it. Uh, and let's start with what I really liked about the book. And first things first, the book is just a fun read. It's, it's entertaining, the pace is great, and it's very easy to read. And so as you're going through it, you'll find yourself kind of sitting down and reading a handful of chapters at a time and not realizing how much time has actually passed. And while you're reading it, you realize that Hunt has done an excellent job of kind of blending urban fantasy and horror together into one kind of mixed genre and it flows easily from the fantasy element to the nervous anxiety ridden suspenseful scenes that borrow from the horror genre and it's because of hunt's writing style where she kind of blends the super fast-paced action with the more descriptive detail-oriented uh baroque style of writing that makes this possible makes it really fun to read but e even more impressive than that is when it comes to urban fantasy and writing in the modern day and dialogue that goes along with that, I'm always a little bit nervous because when people write dialogue for people today and include references to things like Robin's YouTube channel, it can get really awkward and it can get really cringy. And I'm really happy to say that Hunt was able to avoid that completely. And actually I was very impressed with the dialogue in this and how natural it sounded and Though I'm usually adverse to pop culture references because pop culture changes. The references don't always stick around or an audience might be too young to understand the references. So while some audiences might not be old enough or they might have not have seen enough films or video games or read enough books to understand a lot of pop culture references in a lot of different books, I personally think I understood almost every single pop culture reference in this novel. And that was a first for me, and it was a lot of fun. So kudos to Hunt for that. And when it comes to the characters in Burn the Dark, the characters were also really well written. There were no characters that I particularly disliked or disliked at all. Everyone had their own unique personalities, their own unique motivations. Some people spoke differently than others, and we see that as Robin lives in her hometown more, becomes more accustomed to it, her southern drawl comes back, and there's little quirks here and there. Uh, that make each character unique. So Robin, Joel, Kenway, um, Leon, Wayne, even the secondary characters, the kids that Wayne goes to school with, or some of the villains too, uh, they're all pretty unique and they're all well written. So no complaints for the characters at all. And then though the book isn't completely horror, it is that blend of urban fantasy and horror. When the horror comes in, it comes in pretty hard and there are a couple scenes like when Robin's in uh, this bathroom, this public outside bathroom kind of building that's near the van that she lives out of. There's this scene that, you know, I was on the edge of my seat while I was reading it. Or when uh, Wayne, the, the kid in the book, goes through the other house or the dark house um, trying to run away from the Red Lord with Joelle. It, just very creepy, very well written when you do get to those horror parts. And while I'd kind of like to see more, I understand that this is a blend. It's not distinctly horror. It's not distinctly urban fantasy. It's both. So when the horror does come around, it comes it comes around really well. But then there are some things that I didn't particularly like or that stood out that could have been done differently, I guess. And the first thing that comes to mind is how the Red Lord communicates. And there are only a couple sections where the Red Lord communicates or talks or projects into Robin's mind or whatever it is and uh, the way that it's written is just very clunky and choppy and I don't know it was it was difficult to read 
not to, like you kind of understood what was going on but the way that it was laid out and it was actually you know some parts were on the left and some parts were on the right of the page and it was just very strange and because it was so strange that's what i think kind of struck me and it didn't need to be that way and even the way that the red lord does communicate it's in brackets and the letters are spaced out and i get what it's trying to do but I, it just doesn't do it for me and then right out of the gate from you know the second chapter of the book the first scene where we're actually in the present day <laughs> robin gets found out like the first character we meet that's not robin figures out immediately that she's a real witch hunter that the youtube series is not dramatized it's actual footage and they explain it a little bit saying you know i always knew there were witches or your mom always told me there were witches because robin's mom babysat joelle when they were younger um but it is just strange that at the very beginning of the book, in a book where the witch hunter is faking what she does, we immediately have a character figure out that she's a real witch hunter and there's no suspense, there's no hiding, and Robin is pretty open about being a witch hunter if you actually like ask her about it or if one paranormal thing happens, she's like, oh, yeah, I kill witches, no big deal. To the rest of the world, that's murder, but it's cool. Another thing, and this might be a little nitpicky, is towards the end we see, well, Robin's struggled with sort of mental health and the treatment for mental health for people thinking that she hasn't seen a witch when she, or dark things when she really had, but towards the end we see that she uses antipsychotic medication to ward off the illusion magic of witches, and before uh, what I guess is considered the climax, she pops eight times the recommended daily dosage of an antipsychotic and it's just it's interesting choice uh considering the current climate and in a lot of places especially in north america uh when people are overdosing on prescription medication it's a huge problem to make it so that the way to combat illusion magic is literally just to pop a bunch of pills and there are repercussions for her doing this um, though most of those are written off to the encounter she had with the Red Lord. Um, but her love interest, whose very good military friend overdosed on pills and killed himself, um, gets really upset with Robin, but that's not really resolved. It's just kind of mentioned, and it's left for the sequel to see how that kind of unravels. So I'm glad it was addressed, but it was just an interesting choice to put in there in the first place. And that kind of leads me to my final critique of the book, and that's there's not a lot of resolution. It's There's all this build-up, there's all these characters we meet, the powers we see, the, the Red Lord uh, facing off against Robin, but there's no real conclusion. And so this book, obviously it's book one in the Malice Domestica series, so there's going to be more, and as I mentioned, there are more. Um, but this book specifically felt like it was just a setup. When when I said, you know, we saw the climax, I guess, it built up and there was the action, but there was no real payoff. When we get to the end, we don't really know what's happened with the Red Lord. Nothing's happened with the Coven of Witches in the town. No one's worse off or better off. Like most people, most characters in the book, save for the people that didn't know witches existed before but now do, are in the same place they were halfway through the book. Like, there's no growth there. There is no, no resolution of any storylines. And like I said before, with the, the drug, almost drug overdose and the love interest being all upset, that's not resolved either. And then a new character or character we knew about but never saw comes in at literally the very last page, makes a snarky joke, and now we have to wait for the next book. I felt very unfulfilled by the end of the book, which isn't great. But as I move into my final thoughts, into my overall recommendation... And despite those not-so-great aspects, I still had a really good time reading this book. It was a lot of fun. The cover art, very cool, uh, very unique. The, it continues on to the back there. And overall, just a lot of fun to read. It hit the horror when it needed to do it. It transitioned seamlessly into very descriptive writing when Hunt needed to do it. And the way that she wrote the pacing for this book again i was absorbed for hours with it and that can only be a good thing 
because of the unsatisfying ending um, that really kind of took away from it for me. I was really hoping for more and, I, and I'm definitely going to read the next book so I'll find out what happens. But because of that I'm giving this book uh, four stars out of five. If you're a fan of urban fantasy or horror or witches I strongly recommend picking up Burn the Dark. Uh, there's a link down below to Burn the Dark and its sequel I Come with Knives and as I said uh, if you're watching this the first couple days it comes out The Hellion which is the third book in the Malice Domestica series will come out on September 15th. So I'll leave a link down below for all of them. Again, I strongly suggest it. It was a great read. And if you're into this kind of genre, either the urban fantasy or the horror, you can't go wrong picking this up. You're going to have a good time with it. And that's all for now. Um, I'd like to thank my patrons. We have Christine, Christine, Derek, Coyne, Eric. There's a link down to my Patreon down below if you want to support the channel and get some short stories delivered to your inbox. If you have any books that you want reviewed, be they fantasy, dark fantasy, urban fantasy, horror, um, a blend, like this one then leave that in the comments down below if you've read burn the dark let me know what your thoughts are down below and until then i'm gonna go witch proof my house see ya